How's it going, everybody? I saw on some of my uh, on some of my videos, people are asking for the full PCSX2 setup for uh, it's a PS2 emulator for Windows. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to show you how to do all this. So you're going to want to go to our wiki page and go. Um, I'm going to show you how to set up just like the free roam. Um, there are newer versions of the emulator, but uh, the setup is going to be identical. So go to free roam overview. This will give you a little explanation of what uh how we're able to do this. But you're going to want to go down, download this. There is a uh, save states for an older version also, but um, I'm, I'm going to use the Corsten ones because that's like the, that's the original one. So go over here and download the PS2 emulator. This is going to tell me that it's uh, not safe and I should discard it, but don't worry about that. It does this for all of the versions of PCSX2 for some reason. So keep it, uh, show it in the folder or whatever. I've already, I did this one time, so I've already got the, the file in here. But you're either going to want to, uh, if you have 7-zip or WinRAR, you can extract it with that. But I made this, uh, I, I compressed it with Windows, so you can actually just hit extract all, and uh, any version of Windows should be able to do that. Yep, then show your extracted files. And here you go, here's your PCSX2 0.9.7 folder. This will have everything that you need to run the emulator right in this folder and it's like a, it's a portable sort of folder so it doesn't need to even be installed on the computer you can move this folder if you want to uh, you can even put it on the flash drive and go put it on someone else's computer and run it as long as they have the uh, the DirectX run times which I will explain in a little bit so either cut or copy this and I recommend you either put it like on your desktop or uh, for what I'm going to show you how to do it is to put it directly under your C drive as you can see I have Two other versions of PCSX2 here, so you can run uh, multiple versions of it on the uh, on the same computer, on the same hard drive even. So paste it over here, and then you're going to want to go into the folder, and uh, this will have all the folders pretty much already set up. They need to do this. Go and click uh, the PCSX2 actual the application itself. Go into properties under compatibility and uh, make sure that it's set to run as administrator uh, it just seems to to be uh, some people have issues with like uh, user account control stuff and that will uh, take care of that if you do that setting so yeah this click on that and it's going to do like a first time configuration sort of thing so i think uh i've already done this on this computer before so it, it remembers some things so um I'm pretty sure it's going to say if you're doing this the first time, it's, this is going to be under user documents. Click this over to a custom folder, and this will make it so everything goes right in that one folder that I was discussing earlier. Then hit next. You're going to want to set uh, the instructions for uh, up here to SSE4. That's going to be the fastest uh, instructions you can run for this version of the emulator. Now. Um, it's not doing this on my computer again because I've already set this up. But uh, if you do this the first time and set this to SSE4, it's going to say uh, you need DirectX runtimes updates. And it's going to give you a link uh, to a Microsoft page. Just go to that and download the DirectX runtimes. It's a free download. It's uh, just under 100 megabytes, I think. So it's pretty small. Uh, everything else in here will work. Um, this is showing that I have the dev 9 gigahertz plugin down here. That's Don't worry about that. Uh, for you guys, it'll just probably say dev 9 null. And everything else will work. So hit next. Now you're going to need the BIOS for PS2, the PS2 BIOS. Um, as you can see, we don't supply this on our website. Uh, it's probably illegal, actually, if we supply it on our website. So you need to get this off of your, uh, your PS2 yourself. Um, you're going to need like a free McBoot memory card, which you can find off of eBay, or you can just like ask somebody in the uh, the Facebook group to uh, mod your uh, memory card if you want to. I know I've got one. It's, it was pretty easy to do myself, actually. But uh, yeah, they have a program on uh, on the PCSX2 page for uh, ripping the BIOS off. And that is, the link for that is right here. It's got a little more of an explanation down here of what you can do with uh, how to get the BIOS. Um, one thing I will add is it is possible to uh, download the BIOS files off of just like a simple Google search. I've uh, I found them on there, but uh, just keep in mind the legal way to do it is to rip it off of the PS2 itself. So I already have, uh, as you guys saw before, PCSX2 set up 
newer versions. So I'm just going to copy the BIOS files that I have from my PS2 right into there. Go back to 0 0.9.7, and the BIOS files go right in that BIOS folder, which uh, that makes that makes a lot of sense. Then go back over here, refresh the list, and there you go. There's my USA 2.2 BIOS. Um, I'm pretty sure using Frontier's disk, you're going to need a USA BIOS, just in case for you uh, European people out there. But everything else, uh, your default settings should work in here. And go to finish. So now you're going to need to uh, get the uh, DVD for EQOA. I've already ripped it on here, but I'm going to uh, show you how to uh, take your DVD and make it into an image file on your computer. So also back on our wiki, go to, uh, I should have stayed on this before, under the overview setup. Uh, do I have it down here? Yep, use image burn to uh, rip the DVD. Um, just choose any one of these mirrors, download image burn. Uh, get that all set up. You're going to want to uh, put the EQA DVD into the disk tray, run image burn, and then just uh, create an image file from the disk. Just click that. It'll take a couple minutes to run. But uh, you could also just put the uh, DVD directly into the drive itself, but it's I think it's best to just... Uh, to copy it over onto your hard drive. First of all, to see if there's any errors on the disk, there could be like scratches messing it up, but also just to uh, to prevent some wear and tear on your disk. But then once you get the, the ISO file in there, go to your ISO selector, go to browse. I've got all my PS2 games into one folder. Uh, click on your EQA disk. Uh, keep in mind, if you just rip the disk the way I'm showing you, it's not going to get the, uh, the DNAS code off of it itself, you're going to have to uh, patch the DNAS on the disk, which is very easy. We've been able to do that, no problem. But uh, for the free roam, you don't even need to patch the DNAS, so don't even don't even worry about that for now. But then go over here, boot CV, CD DVD fast. So this is going to start loading up EQA Frontiers. Um, to get into the game, though, you're going to need one of the save states. So go back to our wiki page. I should have stayed there. Go to the save state library page on there. Now I'm going to show you how to set this up with the, like the, the ultimate course and test menu one. So this has like a, a developer menu in it that uh you can like stop the the sun from moving. You can stop like the time cycle. Uh, it's got a couple other things in there, but uh, it requires a server connection. So a lot of them you can't do anything with, but uh. As far as the free roam save states, this is uh, probably the the most complete one to use. It'll take a little bit to download. It's kind of a bigger bigger file. And there we go. Again, show it in your folder. You're going to need to extract this one as well. So extract that. And it's going to leave you with this weird looking file thing here. <laughs> uh, cut this, go back over your seat, go to your PCSX2 0.9.7, and under S states, that is where your save states go. Just paste that there. The only thing you need to know for this is the last three digits. 002, that is the number save state you're going to be loading. So if you download any of the save states off of our website, they're all going to have different numbers. Um, it's possible to just go in here even and just like go like this and change the number here at the end and make it a different number save state it'll say it might be unusable but are you sure you want to change it just hit yes and that'll be a uh, save state number one now in here so now this is going to be all ready to load right up into uh, the world you don't have to go through a uh, memory card setup you don't have to go through any of the load screens at all just go right to load state load slot one and there we go you're going to see he, Dustin was doing some hacking. He's got guards swimming out here and <laughs> other weird stuff like that. But you're also going to notice uh, there's no way to move around right now. What you're going to need to do is go into config and set up your controller. So go under controller's pad, 
go to your plugin settings. I recommend you uh, get something like a, a plugin sort of controller that works on Windows. Uh, uh, I've noticed the Xbox 360 uh, USB controller works perfectly, and uh, there's actually a profiles for a lot of games. So uh, make sure you plug that in, uh, hit refresh if you don't see it right away, and then go over to pad one. This is where you're going to actually map the uh, the controls. So uh, it is possible to do this off of just like a keyboard and uh, map all of these controls onto a keyboard, but as you can imagine, it's it'd be crazy difficult to run. And something like a, a 360 controller, you can map all of the buttons uh, in the same exact location. So just like on a 360 controller, it'd be a square would be X, cross would be A, triangle is Y, and circle is B. But then you just keep uh, clicking, you just click here, and then push the button that you want to use for it. Um, analog and mouse, uh, you don't need that. But yeah, go through here and do all of the buttons. Make sure they go through also, because sometimes I notice they don't seem to go through. I have noticed it is possible to set up like uh, if you got a PS3 or PS4 controller, it's possible to get those uh, working in Windows as well. But in the uh, the newer versions of Windows, you need like a uh, assigned driver to run uh, peripherals, and uh, obviously Sony doesn't supply those. So you're going to need to uh, use uh, a program to like map the controls of the PS3 uh, or PS4 controllers if you want to use that. Um, I'm not going to show you how because it's uh, I don't I don't have a PS3 or PS4 controller. So uh, yeah, I recommend you use the Xbox controller for this though. And then go back and there we go. Look at that. I can run around. Um, I'm using a uh, pretty beastly computer for this. This is like my my gaming computer. It's brand new, overclocked. It's like a you know four hundred dollar graphics card in here. So uh, most of you aren't going to be running full speed or immediately like I am. So uh, I'll give you a little overview of what these numbers at the top mean. Uh, FPS is just basically how uh, the speed of the game running. Um, the full speed is uh, fifty nine point ninety four, but it'll it'll hover around uh, sixty basically if it's running at full speed. Uh, EE over here stands for a motion engine. That is like the main, um, the main uh, processor chip on the PS2. That's uh, it's a MIPS processor, and that's basically what they're just. Uh, this is this program is just converting the the MIPS code into uh, something your computer understands. GS uh, stands for uh, I'm not entirely sure, but that's uh, the graphics graphics synthesizer. I think that's just basically the graphics card of the PS2. Um, I've noticed this game has pretty low GS requirements and uh, pretty high EE requirements. So uh, for a lot of people, you need to run speed hacks to get this to run at 60. So you'll want to go into config and go under emulation settings. Over here, you have speed hacks. As you can see, I don't have any running, so that would be like uh, that's my computer is able to run this at full speed. It's a I mean, it's pretty high requirements. It's a 4.2 gigahertz i5 processor. I, it's uh, but I have got this running on like a. I have an older laptop with a, an old i5 in it, and that this is able to uh, get it to run pretty well. So if you have a, if you see that the EE is running really high, like 99 or 100, you can set this to reduce the uh, the EE cycle. Uh, it will uh, reduce compatibility, and it might make the game look a little bit choppy. But if uh, EE is at 100, and it's that is what's limiting the uh, the emulator from running full speed, setting that to two will get it to run to full speed. Uh, this game also seems to have pretty high uh, VU uh, settings. Uh, the VU was like a uh, a coprocessor processor on the PS2. There's a, a VU VU zero and a VU one. Um, I've noticed setting this to 1 or to 2, uh, especially to 2 on my laptop, gets this to run at full speed. Again, it's going to make it a little bit choppier. But then you also have things in here like uh, enable fast C CD DVD. Uh, that'll, I haven't noticed any problems with this game with that. It'll uh, make zones load quicker. Um, I wouldn't use either of these two speed hacks, uh, though I haven't noticed any, any improvements that come with them. 
uh, if you don't need the speed hacks, uh, don't use them. If you need them, uh, use them. Um, another thing you might have noticed is uh, that we're able to run around in a like super speed. Uh, there is a setting in this uh, save state itself where you can do that. So as you notice, get start uh, test that was not there back in the day. What uh, Dustin did is he uh, modded this test menu and he dropped it in place of uh, where the auction menu was before. So if you go to test, there's a lot of stuff in there. Um, this is stuff I'm sure 99.999% of people never saw in this game. But uh, for super speed, run speed, fast run on, you can run around pretty fast. Uh, there's other, another way that you can run around fast too though, and I'll show you that. Uh, go into config, go to emulation settings. Under GS, you can disable frame limiting. That'll let uh, your processor just run as fast as it possibly can. Uh, if you look like directly down or something, you can see my F my FPS there shoots up crazy high. That'll let you uh, run around really fast. Uh, first player seems to have really high. Be able to do that really high. Uh, looking up makes it run really high. But uh. Yeah, looking around just regularly, it kind of just runs at a uh, normal speed like that. Uh, the last things I'm going to show you with the emulator is just like uh, teleporting around and stuff. Um, with this save state, he has it set so rate uh, hit L2. You got the teleport right up there at top. Uh, if you're using one of the other save states to teleport, you're going to want to go into support, I think status yeah there you go and then there's a uh, column and row way of going through uh, just up and up and down left and right of going through Tenaria and then if you hit a uh, circle and box that cycles through uh, the different planes different expansion zones and whatnot so uh, if you go to anything besides Tenaria it's going to uh, get rid of your uh your character and you're just gonna be like a blank thing but if you stay in Tunaria it'll uh keep the uh your character so here I'll go to Mary Bywater that was a cool little zone I always like that you'll notice this it's gonna load a lot faster than it did on your PS2 it still takes a little while which is pretty surprising because I have this I have the uh the DVD loaded onto an SSD solid state uh device and it's uh crazy fast but uh yeah. there you go you can run around the map it's really nice uh you can at least go and explore a lot of areas but yeah that's pretty much it for the setup um again if you uh, if uh, i don't think there's much of a difference between uh the newer versions of pcsx2 and this version to really go through the different setups uh I've, the only thing i've noticed is the first screen just has a little bit different of like a look but it's all uh, all the same options just uh yeah i hope you guys enjoyed the video and i hope you enjoy uh running around through scenario